it may soon be time to sell into that strength. Joining me now, Post 9, Tony Pascarello, Goldman Sachs. It's good to see you again. Thanks, Scott. Good to so be here. So we have like good seasonals, right? That's what people say. Well, it's a great time of year to, to buy stocks historically, but bad Fed speak. I'm calling it that because it's hawkish and it's, you know, obviously not great for stocks. So which wins out? I think it's a fair characterization. The way I would think about it is separate flows of positioning from fundamentals. Flows and positioning, I think, actually really pretty healthy right now. Who's buying corporates in a big way? hedge funds, and retail. So we see that picture very clearly through our franchise. We can unpack any of that if you'd like. So you're, you're saying that, that people are adding risk right now? The biggest, the, biggest, the biggest variable in that equation are corporates. So we think there's going to be a trillion dollars of stock buybacks this year. That'll be a record. Our activity is running 2x where it was a year ago. That could be $10 billion a, a day. November and December is the best two-month period of the entire year for stock buybacks. So that's your heavy. Hedge funds chasing a little bit, and retail still on net a better buyer. Thirty-four billion into equity mutual funds and ETFs over the past month. So, so flow of fund dynamics I think look pretty healthy. Technicals and seasonals, as you say, probably favorable from here to the end of the year. Then you have the fundamental story. Uh, okay, because I was going to ask you how long the runway is for for all of this. I mean, if we're painting a picture, which many are trying to paint, of a five to six week possibility of a, of a move. And then all bets are off because reality smacks you in the head. I think you want to be in position to sell strength in the new year. And I say that because of the fundamental piece, which is on one big picture, what governs the stock market. It's the multiple and it's earnings. So mm -hmm. all year, the story has basically been because of the Fed's knockdown, drag out fight against inflation. It's been pressure on the multiple. That's the move from 25 to 15. Feeling a little bit better about that, as you say, over the past week or so. Then you look at the earnings side of the equation. And that's where I think the sentiment has turned. For Q3 earnings, when you take out the energy companies, they're down 5%. So very high profile misses at the top of the index. Mm -hmm. And then very big negative revisions to 23. So in a way, I think you've just swapped one challenge for another. What, what about what Bullard said today? Are we full? I mean, look, Goldman had added another rate hike to their map just yesterday, right? Yeah. Hotsius, Hotsius did that. So you guys are still a, a expressing a, a hawkish view on where you think the Fed is going to be and how aggressive they're, they're going to remain. How's that factor into everything? So our forecast, 15 December, then three by 25 next year, February, March, May. May was the new one. May's the new one. So you're at 5% come May. That should be the terminal rate. Um, I well, think for the uh, Fed. Uh, maybe you should tell Bullard that. You know what's interesting about Bullard? He's generally had the right call. He's been aggressive in front foot. Now, he's a short timer, but he's generally been one of the people to follow. And I think part of what he's saying and part of the challenge for the Fed is they have to keep the pressure on, right? Because if they don't, financial conditions are going to ease. What we saw last week was the third biggest easing in financial conditions in the past 30 years. And so if the Fed wants to get the tiger back in the cage, they can't declare an all clear anytime soon.